Welcome to Field Sports Britain, coming to you this week from Britain's newest shooting show, Bisley Live. Coming up, how safe are your shooting specs? We're trying to knock holes in several pairs of shooting glasses. We're out with Britain's top shot, George Digweed, oh. seeing at what distance he can break a clay target. 60 yards, 90 yards, you're not even close. Quite a good one. I'm glad you were filming it. First, Debbie does deer. We're up in Scotland with sporting rifle editor Peter Carr's wife Deborah, who's out after her first stag. It's Deborah Carr's first go at deer stalking, which is incredible because she is wife of the editor of the UK's top deer stalking magazine, Sporting Rifle. That doesn't mean he's going to give her the benefit of any doubt. The wind's wrong handed as it is now, but we're going to skirt up the wind back of the forestry and there's a big open area so we're giving up the wind here to get into a suitable position to drop back into the forestry and see if there's a suitable stag in there. Debbie, you do agree with that? I do, absolutely. Do you agree That's... with everything he says? <laughs> <laughs> we will be especially popular with the foresters if we shoot a stag in one of the blocks of woodland. These animals are damaging this cash crop. It's a long walk in, but all we see is out of season. There's two hinds and calves there, just on the brow. But they, they keep looking back down into the quarry. So we can't do anything till they disappear. So do you reckon there might be something there? There might be a stag with them, but we can't do anything till they've gone over that top. But if we get there and there isn't a stag with them, then uh, we've wasted quite a bit of time. How far are we from the stag? It can't be more than a couple of hundred yards. No, 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 no. But it's a couple of hundred yards over. Quite boggy difficult terrain. I mean, when, when they've disappeared, we might go and have a look. On one of our stops, Peter explains what the well-dressed stalker is wearing this season. What, what, have you, what have you got on today, Mr Carr? Uh, Black Islander gaiters. Best gaiters on the market, without a doubt. Yeah, without you, a doubt. Now, did, you, did these arrive free or did you pay for no, them? No, 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 no. Uh, actually, to be fair, these were free, but I've been wearing Black Islander gaiters since I was gamekeeping, so I've always stuck with them. And I think in 15 years I've had five pairs so that I think that's testament to how good these are. All right, um, boots? Yep, Dana, these are actually, yeah, Dana um, Special Forces boots, uh, desert boats, but... Uh, this is not a desert, this is a bog. Exactly, but the Gore-Tex, but they're like slippers from brand new, you can wear, wear them straight away, you don't have to break them in, great stuff. Now you are looking a lot like a kind of stalking version of Selfridges. What, tell me about your jacket. <laughs> uh, Har Keeler, uh, jacket and trousers, uh, Pro Hunter. Uh, very, very good. Expensive? Uh, very expensive, but very, very good. Right. I think it's uh, buy once, buy right, really. Okay, and a lovely pair of Swarovski binoculars, if I may say. Yeah, these are the all singing, all dancing, top of the range Swarovski, uh, the EL range, uh, 8x42. Very, very light, integral range finder. Uh, and I think the, the advantage is it really is how light that they are compared to, to others on the market. These are definitely the lightest, very accurate, and the Swarovski clarity that we all uh, know so well. And a very lovely Swarovski scope next to you. That's not a draw scope though, is it? Yeah, it's a draw scope, yeah, three oh, draw scope, yeah. Fantastic. It's not only for the hill, everybody thinks the draw scopes are for the hill. Uh, for checking stags, but I, I use it a lot on the low ground for the row. It's absolutely fantastic for judging trophy quality on row deer. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Now, did, did you buy your own hat? Uh, no, actually, this is, goes back to my keepering days. Uh, uh, it's a bit of an heirloom, really. <laughs> deer stalking can make you look impossibly glamorous and athletic. But when the weather comes in, the angle of the hill increases and the burn is just too wide to jump. Deer stalking can have the opposite effect. Peter has to learn to be a patient husband. Debs has to learn to be an understanding wife. We have had six hours on the hill when we descend into forestry and just around a corner we spot our first stag of the day. Debs has one of the shortest stalks in history and is onto the beast at 40 yards range. Please forgive the flinch of the cameraman. She brings it down cleanly. Be happy with that. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's been a long day, but we got there. Now, what amazes me is you are married to Peter and you've never shot a stag before. Never yes. shot before. First one, yeah. Uh, is this something you want to do for a long time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's brilliant. Good yeah, excellent, good shot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Bit of praise there, was that praise? Yeah, apart from dropping it in a bog. <laughs> I got him. After calling up help from Pete's pal Nick Latus, they load the carcass onto the tray on the back of the vehicle. Just time for Pete to say something nice to Debs. Well, well done, Deborah. Thank you. Good shot. Good teacher. Right answer. <laughs> right. And it's back off to continue the conversation at the larder. Now it's over to David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The government has officially reacted to a Home Affairs Committee which came out with a series of ideas to restrict gun ownership and stop shooting sports. Happily, the position is do nothing. They, they understood the importance of shooting sports and uh, I think the work that we did in Parliament has actually shown the government that shooting sports is an industry, it's nothing to, not even related to gun crime and what the actual point of the uh, Home Affairs Committee meeting actually was about. Restaurants, pubs and bars in the south of England have been warned not to buy poached game after Sussex police received reports of suspicious activity. A wildlife crime officer said, we've received reports from members of the public who've seen lights and heard loud noises coming from woodlands in the area. And anyone who suspects illegal poaching is going on is asked to contact Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Now, TV chef Marco Pierre White and friend and fellow stalker Dominic Griffiths received awards this weekend from sporting rifle editor Peter Carr and publisher Wes Stanton. Dominic won a Lifetime Achievement Award for services to head measuring. Marco won the award for Top British Stalker. The winner of the Sens Proflex Digital Ear Defenders has sent in a photograph sporting his new ear attire. Gary Gibb is a member of the Dunfermline Small Ball Club. He's pictured here in front of the trophy cabinet with his own special prize. The shots were taken by his mate Dave Wardle, a freelance photographer. Looking good Gary and well done once again. You're now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, one of the crowd pleasers here at Busy Live is George Digweed, and he's doing a bit of showing off. George Digweed is the guest of honour at Bisley Live 2011 with good reason. The 19 times world champion is on fire this year and you can guarantee he'll attract the crowds. George doesn't go for the Madonna style microphone to talk us through his demo. It's a quick chat and then he lets his shooting do the talking. Each stand first from the shoulder, then from the hip, hopefully. <laughs> Not that I've seen my hips for years. So, seven stands, targets being shot from the shoulder and the hip to demonstrate hand-eye coordination, and there's no funny business. He's using his usual Parazzi with game ball white gold cartridges straight out of the box. He also wants to demonstrate that a shotgun can be effective beyond 40 yards in the right hands, and we've certainly witnessed that before, filming him taking out pigeons and crows from low orbit. He's a real crowd pleaser, but that was just the starter. Now it's time for his party piece. Starting from 10 yards away from target, he tells the crowd he is going to walk back 10 paces after breaking a clay at each distance. As the distance grows, so does the crowd. We get to the point where we are joining the punters as George breaks another clay without dropping a shot. All right, so that's 80 yards with a standard shell. I'm going to keep coming. With the golf buggy moved... Right, 90 yards. Doesn't look very big, does it? <laughs> and with that, the stewards get nervous and the crowds get excited. George parts the waves to get to the 100-yard mark. Oh, I shouldn't do that, but I'm going straight back to 100. Now George changes to black gold fives. Another clay down and George reins it in a bit and starts moving back five yards at a time. 105 is a breeze. 110 requires the second barrel, but hey. 
People are now starting to collect the shell cases as a memento. They know they are witnessing something special. At 115, even the stand holders are getting a decent view. And here we go again. 120 yards comes and goes with one shot and with it George's previous personal best at 118 yards set in the United States. 125 next and his Parazzi with the standard shot does the trick, together with a talent like no other. Right, ladies and gentlemen, George is now going to take a shot at a target the size of a beer match from 130 yards. He is stepping into unknown territory. The only other filmed record of this kind of super shooting is 20 yards closer to the target. 130 yards. Just for you, David. <laughs> oh! What a superhuman performance. That just gives you the idea of how far a shotgun will kill. Yeah. Anyway, adios. That's the furthest I've ever done. Uh, I did one in America at 118. But definitely the conditions help. Hot, warm day. Shot flies further. You know, nice, no wind, so it's a nice straight target. You've got to read the line. The other thing is you've got to remember that at that range, the shot's dropping so much that I've got to drop the shot into the target as well as work out where I'm going to shoot it. So it's not just, you know, shooting at the target. You've got to drop your shot in there and everything. So anyway, quite a good one. I'm glad you were filming it. Thanks. Now, one of the things Bisley Live does very well is showcase innovation. Here are some of the people who are bringing new kit to shooting. The unique selling point of this fair is the try before you buy factor. Or maybe it should be play for a day. Ben is from London and his only experience of a rifle is having a go with his father's 2-2 when he's back home in Lincoln. Well my dad's been a couple of times before to the open day and he's got a rifle at home which I've shot once before so I thought right I'm going to pop along have a go, I've come with a friend as well um, but I've never seen or shot anything like this so it's totally different for me. Got success first time out. Yeah, yeah, so in fact I've hit two of the red discs which I'm over the moon with and I didn't expect to. Is it something yeah. you would contemplate now? Is it just, sort of, I don't know, sort of big boy's toy? Yeah, maybe. It's a day out. I live down in London, so sort of just to come across for this. I don't normally do this sort of thing. My dad lives up in Lincolnshire, up in the country, so he's got a rifle for just a bit of vermin control rabbits. But now, yeah, I think when I go back up there, I'll definitely have another go again. <laughs> ben is enjoying the Firebird targets, but there are others out on the range making their debut. We found some targets in America which are remote controlled. So, absolutely super new product. So we've grabbed them, taken on the European distributorship, and we have them down on the on the range. We're using them today. Terrific. And uh, so you can you can put them at any distance you like. You press the button, up they come. Press the button, down they go. That's right. And on the the standard target, you can with the little remote control aerial out, you can use them 300 meters. And with the extra long range remote control, you can do a thousand meters. Opportunity has knocked with Bisley Live for many manufacturers. Idleback is one of them. They are keen to see how their shooting seat performs on a range compared with in the field. And we find just the man to give us a fair review. Martin, you're a range conducting officer here at uh, Bisley. How long have you done that for? Uh, it's about 10 years now. And uh, you're a sports shooter as well. You obviously enjoy talking Yes, shooting. I uh, shoot internationally with the Great Britain team. Now, um, they call you gravel bellies, don't they? <laughs> well, I think that's uh, an old military term. Uh, I, I certainly wouldn't call anyone by that name. <laughs> We've um, borrowed this chair from Idleback uh, because they consider it to be good for range use. We've tried it out in the field. We think it's good there. Now, I'm going to ask you to take a couple of shots from this and take a couple of shots from the floor and see whether the group varies at all. Is that okay. all right? By all means, I... Be happy to do that. Right, that's the first three shots. We're now going to move to the prone position.
Right. Happy or not happy? Yes, it's the first time that I've used the chair to shoot, and I must say it's a different experience altogether. Uh, but the, the result is what counts, and the three-shot group in the chair was as good, if not better, than the three shots lying in the prone position. Could you see a time when, you know, Bisley, one of the world's greatest rangers, has a line of idle back chairs up it during the big Imperial meeting? I could see it happening. Um, the reason I say that is because more and more people these days like to be involved in shooting and the elderly would certainly like the opportunity to be able to sit in a chair. So it was comfortable as well? Most definitely. It's something that I'd never thought about doing before, but I would certainly entertain doing it again. Blazer is one of the big players here, and again the British Sporting Rifle Club's range is perfect for people to get a taste of what they're buying. The main reason I wanted to come today was actually to be able to try out some of the guns, um, you know, doing a bit of shooting myself. Uh, it's great, but you invest a lot of money in a rifle that subsequently you find might not be exactly what you want. Uh, and there's a particular rifle that I've had my eye on for some time, and this was the opportunity to come out and try it live on the range. Just a fantastic opportunity. How did you find it? Look, my score speaks for itself. It was fantastic. It was uh, a great rifle to shoot and it's just a great opportunity, very relaxed and uh, great weather as well. Can I ask what rifle you're after? Uh, it's a, a blazer uh, and uh, I particularly want it for, for deer stalking um, and I'm attracted to the fact that you can get, uh, you know, exchange the barrels on it so I can, you know, have, have a, a variety of, of calibres but just sort of still have the, the one gun which is uh, a pretty attractive proposition as far as I'm concerned. Great news for Rupert from Open Season, which distributes Blazer in the UK, but Rupert is a self-confessed shooting geek and has come up with some nifty kit of his own. One of the issues with stalkers and shooters uh, together is obviously the concern about getting foreign objects in the end of your gun or in your silencer that could obviously cause an obstruction and then a you know, fairly sort of devastating uh, you know, uh, problem with regards to your gun. So um, we've taken Maus's uh, muzzle safe um, system, uh, which is a nice little silicon bung and quite simply got a little recess in the crown of the actual product here. Um, that bung just literally sits into place like that and we'll just shoot out, um, we'll just pop out with the air pressure in the silencer um, and be a couple of feet away from where you are. So from that side of things, it, uh, it, it again, it's another little safety feature that we put on there. So life on the range is good for the trade and the public. And safety is a major part of the event, which is what we're going to concentrate on now with a shooting glasses safety test. When James Marchington of Clay Shooting Magazine said we would be shooting glasses, I thought I'd misheard him. Not a bit of it. Today he has joined Tony Reid and Ian Mulliner of Mulliner Guns in Dorset to see what happens when you fire a shotgun directly at various shooting glasses at 50 yards. I think the readers need to know what what glasses do and why they should wear them. You know, We all moan a bit when people go, have you got your safety glasses on? I think people need to understand it really does matter. It's important and I think this visually shows them what can happen and how the glasses protect them. So why are shooting glasses so useful? I've been hit with ricochet pellets on a, on a sporting and skeet range. Um, in in so the face area? In the face area, yeah. Yes, painful. It smarts a bit when it hits you on the head or the face. It does smart a bit and fortunately on one occasion I, I did have one hit me central in the... If I hadn't have been... If I hadn't been wearing safety glasses, I could have had a serious eye injury. Is that a pellet or a clay? That was a pellet. That was a, pellet. a steel pellet, actually. It was a ricocheted steel pellet on a skeet range. So the steel pellets tend to see the ricochet more, obviously, in the lead. And the man who's going to do the testing? My friend Isaiah. Why do we call him Isaiah? Because one Isaiah than the other. On with the test. Ian places the glasses ranging in price from £50 to £300 on Isaiah's head and Tony shoots them. Then they record the results which James will take and turn into an in-depth article in clay shooting. Any of them showing any signs of going crack? No, there's no, no, no signs of any, any failures or anything giving away at all. Um, interesting that one got hit with the wad as well. <laughs> but um, no, they're all holding up very well. I'll go with some standard sunglasses in a moment, see how they fare. Tony is a reliable shot, but he finds it hard consistently to fire at static targets. He prefers moving targets. I do mainly trap down the line. Uh, we'll do a bit of APT. I stopped shooting for 10 years, only started again two years ago. I'm starting to build up again. 
um, but I prefer track as opposed to the other disciplines. And uh, have you won prizes? I have been in the past the county champion for Wiltshire and Dorset. I'm trying to get back there now to the same standard. We find out that all the shooting glasses on test work well, but so do the ordinary glasses. Finally, we move forward to around 30 yards and try again with a pair of the shooting glasses and with Ian's ordinary sunglasses. The shooting glasses are fine. The same cannot be said of the ordinary sunglasses. Well, after the 50 metre test, we, we took it into um, 30 metres, um, which is obviously uh, extremely close. And we tried the sunglasses first and we've had an instant failure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pellets going straight through the lens. Uh, what sort of sunglasses are those? That they, uh, I, can't, I don't want to mention the name, but they're, they're a branded pair of sunglasses of reasonable quality, fairly mm -hmm. expensive, probably very good for protecting your eyes from sunshine, but obviously not ricochet you, pellets. You didn't buy those for shooting then? I didn't buy them for shooting, no, 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 I bought them for holiday. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the other glasses, the proper shooting glasses, they seem to have survived at 30 at, yards. At, at, at the same range, there's a slight dent on one of the press studs, and you can see witness marks on the lens, but no, no, no visible damage, no cracks, no protrusions. Perfect. Nothing whatsoever. Um, all the other safety glasses we tested um, uh, at 50 metres and gained very, very, very similar results. Well, it's been a blast here at Bisley Live and it's packing up time. They're back next year. Field Sports Britain is back next week when we'll be bringing you a new fox call from Australia. It's the bee's knees, the wasp's nipples, the dingoes nuts. In fact, it's the erogenous zones of every marsupial you can think of. Hello, Peter in Australia who sent it to us. Tune in to that, subscribe to watch us on YouTube, click to follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook. You will get news of our programme every week and by email. Thank you for watching. <laughs>